who will influence the nation with their creative bakes. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Tonight, 12 of the country's most talented bakers compete for the title of the Tastemaster, along with 90,000 rands worth of prizes. Our first six finalists are contending for a spot in the top 10, but they'll need to impress judges Zola Nene and Fritz Kuhn. Master to me is somebody who not only has a love and passion for baking, but somebody who has an amazing skill set when it comes to baked goods. I want to see somebody who will show me their personality through their bakes, and somebody whose talent is undeniable when it comes to baking cakes. A tastemaster for me is iemand wat die fundamentele aspekte van bak verstaan om so doende dit altyd as die fondasie van die platform te bou. Maar wat vir my baie belangrik is, is om die individie, die authenticiteit, die uniekheid, achter die persoon te sien wat die gebak doen. My Food Dirty on TV actually started on Expresso. That was the very first show that I was on air for. And it's a funny story how it happened. And actually, it's the reason why I believe that what's meant for you will always find you. So the executive producer, Patience Stevens, I was working behind the scenes in production. She came into one of the meetings one day and she said, you, I want you to be on air. And I was like, what, me? Uh, no, I didn't sign up for that. I signed up for behind the scenes to book the chefs, etc. For about a month, I went, no, no, I'm not going to be on TV, no. And she was like, I want you on TV, I want you on TV. And she was persistent and eventually I was just like, you know what, okay, fine. I'll try it once, it'll be a disaster, we'll never speak of it again, we'll move on. And truth be told, I went on for the first time on TV, I shot like a kids cooking segment and I was resident chef on Expresso Show for seven years. So, <laughs> yeah, what's meant for you, we'll find you. Ek is een paar ongelukke bakker, jy weet, soos um, ek was een quantity surveyor gewees, ek het uh, sideline bezigheid begin wat kiosks gebouw het en, en brode verkoop het en ek het een bakkerij daar uit begin en ek het achtergekom ek het een verskrikkelijke passie vir die artisan baking en die Europese stijl van natuurlijke fermentatie, artisan bakkers wat in die aande bak en die woodfired ovens en die hele concept daarvan het my net Je weet het net hier aan die gang gekry en ek het net gesê, weet jy wat, ek het niks om te verloor nie. Nou gaan ek hier die trade leer en ek gaan het boordelik leer. Ek het dit verder pursue, ek het dit nagesit en um, my eie bakkerij begin in Stellenbosch, 2010. Ja, so hier is waar alles vir ons begin het, elf jaar terug in die harkie van Stellenbosch, Kerkstraat. Ek het begin broodbak en die mens het gekom, he. dit was amazing geweest. Ons het die koffiemachine neergesit, ek het brood gebak, klaar, koffies gemaakt en dit was dit. Everyone has a connection to baking. I think it's a nostalgic thing. Everybody remembers their first birthday cake or the first time they smelt fresh bread. So I think that everyone has an emotive response to baking. And I think that's why everyone during the pandemic has become an inner baker, if you will. So it's really exciting that we're exploring all these amazing home cooks who have discovered their love for baking and yeah, are going to showcase their delicious cakes and bakes. Mmm, delicious. Mm. Het is een groot voorrecht om um, deel te wees van Thijsmaster en die rede daarvoor is soos as jy dier jare se ervaring is, dan, dan het jy die hoogste hoog ervaar in die laagste laag en daar geef jy die kapasiteit om oor te draa en om mense te help wat nou net hierdie, hierdie reis begin en nou reg is om op te stuig. Jy kan van die wijsheid en die ervaring in hulle oor draa om hulle toolkit vol te maak, so dat hulle het miskien beter as jy kan doen. Fritz? Zola? Are you ready to eat some cake? Indeed I am. My name is Loazi Laliza, also known as Chef Benoit, which means blessed. I've been blessed with my hands and my brains to be able to think and create wonderful dishes. My name is Tando Manyoni. I am 22 years old from Soweto in Joburg. My strengths are my ability to mix and balance flavors, my preciseness and attention to detail, as well as my decorating and plating skills. My name is Shazi Samar. I'm 22 years old. I'm from Port Elizabeth. I think I bring a different and unique aspect to this competition. Many people have a culinary background and have studied. I don't. I just have my memories of baking with my family, and I think that is enough. It's my recipe to success. 
My name is Samantha Liang. I am 31 years old. I am a wedding cake designer from Milneton, Cape Town. Winning season two of the Taste Master would be one of the biggest accomplishments of my career. I will show the world that Sam's here and Sam's got something to say and let's do this. It's gonna be great. I'm ready. Contestants, this is the moment that you've been waiting for. It's time to show off your baking skills. Are you ready? Yeah. This is so intimidating. I've never worked in a culinary place before, any sort of big kitchen with all this professional equipment, so I don't know what to expect. The kitchens are immaculate. The appliances are spectacular. The ovens are so beautiful. All the equipment, I see the Thermomix there. I'm like, yes, I finally get to use the Thermomix in my life. This is a whole new experience for me. Baking on camera, on TV. Yeah, that's exciting, but it's nerve wracking. A fun yet difficult road lies ahead, filled with many challenges, but at the end of it, one of you could be crowned the new taste master. That's right. You are the first six of 12 contestants, all hungry, all talented, ready to win the competition. Your journey starts here, guys, because today you'll be baking for a spot in the top 10. At the end of today, three of you will be going straight to the top 10, but three of you who have not done enough will be competing in our very first elimination challenge. Everything is so unknown and I'm just, I just hope everything goes well. I am nervous, but I think it's like a mixture of an excited nervous and a nervous nervous. Each one of you has been allowed to bring one personal item to assist you throughout this competition. It's something sentimental from home that you will keep by your side and use it when you need it. I hope you've chosen wisely. My approach is to bring a flavor burst as well as a artistic flair and finesse to the competition. My special item is cardamom. I grew up using the spice and my gran as well. So it reminds me pretty much of her and my childhood, hence it's special to me. I'm Kyle Hatred, I'm 36 years old. I'm from the Mother City Cape Town and I'm a pastry chef and private chef. I love the intricacies of creating new desserts, developing new ideas, thinking about concepts and just all around getting creative, creative, creative. So my special item is this. A chocolate spray gun. I use it all the time. I got it about five years ago. I imported it from Switzerland. Hopefully it will give me the competitive edge. My special item is this little metal ruler. When I was coming up in the cake industry, I didn't really have money to invest in expensive tools. So this is what I use to get my sharp edges. And I feel like you don't need expensive tools to get the job done. My special item is this little offset spatula. I've chosen this item because it's small, okay? It's small, it helps you get into all the little small nits and bits of the cake that a bigger spatula wouldn't do. So I'm glad I've got this little baby here. With their special items in hand, it's time to get baking. But first, Zola shares an inspiring masterclass. Stand a chance of winning a weekly hamper from Le Creuset and be included into the draw for the grand prize of a Thermomix TM6 valued at 26,000 Rand. By creating your own bake with Royal Baking Powder and sharing your entry on the Tastemaster SA social media platforms. Entries close midnight on 5 December 2021. For further entry details and T's and C's, visit thetastemaster.co.za. Who will influence the nation with their creative bakes? Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Are you ready for your challenge? Yeah. Yes. You will have noticed this beautiful display of fruit in front of me. That's because today's challenge is all about fruit. So today we want to see six unique cakes, one from each of you, celebrating fruit using your tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. You will have three hours for today's bake. Three hours of... That's not enough. Like, no. I think that's a fair time to make it. Now, three hours may seem like a long time, but remember, you have to bake from scratch, you have to cool your cake, you have to assemble your cake, and you have to decorate it. So, use your time wisely. 
I've never really baked with a time constraint before, so I don't know how I'm going to adapt to the whole three hour thing, but I think I can pull this off. I've worked in a whole lot of professional kitchens and I'm used to working under pressure and this is a whole other ball game. By baking the best cake today, one of you will earn this. The fruit mastery pin. Just a pin? It's about the size of my cardamom. Throughout the competition, you'll have the opportunity to win pins like this one. Each one symbolizing the challenge that you have mastered. What does this pin represent? Well, winning this pin will give you a special advantage in our very first top 10 challenge. So, you definitely want to win this pin. I feel like this pin is gold and I absolutely need to get this. I need it. I need that pin. To get you inspired for this specific challenge, Zola will be hosting you for a private masterclass in which she will showcase her favorite cake inspired by fruit. Private masterclass from Zola? Wow, I feel so honored. It's like a dream come true. I've watched her on YouTube and now I'm going to be watching her in front of my eyes. Contestants, welcome to your very first masterclass. Before we get started, let me give you a gift from myself and Fritz to you guys. Something that will come in very handy throughout the competition. Yay! I feel special. You are. You are special. Today isn't about teaching you how to recreate what I'm making, because as avid bakers and passionate foodies, I'm sure this is not your first rodeo. Today is more about inspiring you and celebrating fruit, of course. So I will be making this. Thank you, kind assistant. <laughs> this is my delicious citrus Swiss roll with marmalade and Chantilly cream. Thank you. She's definitely setting the bar high for us and I'm sure she's expecting perfection. This recipe is made using a Genoise sponge, so we're going to whisk the eggs and the caster sugar. Here we've got some vanilla paste. What I always say to people is use the best of what you can afford, and if that happens to be essence, then that's good too. Right, so we whisk this until we get to ribbon stage. I've whisked uh, many an egg in my lifetime, and trust me, one false move and you're wrong, dead in the water. So how do you know when your eggs are ready? Okay, so you know that you've reached ribbon stage when you can lift your beaters and you draw an eight on top of the batter and before you finish the eight, you can still see the whole eight. Now time for the dry ingredients. Purists will say that you should sift three times. I say life is too short. So one sifting will be more than enough. So I've got some cake wheat flour going into the sieve. Then in with our raising agent, which is our royal baking powder. Aerate the cake even more and make it even lighter and fluffier. And then we just sift. And then use a metal spoon. All of this is about retaining as much of the air that you have worked into this batter. Here is our tin greased and then lined with paper. The paper is important because the paper is going to help us roll the Swiss roll once it comes out the oven. So this is ready to go into the oven. Please guys, do not bang it into the oven and don't bang it on the counter because why guys? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Zola's cake is in the oven. I haven't seen any fruit. I wonder where the orange is going to come in. As soon as it comes out the oven, you need to roll it. So as you can see, this one has been rolled already. So the idea here is to use the paper and roll the paper within the sponge. This obviously helps you to make sure that the sponge doesn't crack when you fill it now. So here I've got some marmalade. Marmalade is a strong flavor, so you want to sort of use it sparingly. And here I've got some Chantilly cream, which is basically some fresh cream whisked with icing sugar to taste and a bit of vanilla paste. Give that a good spread. And I like to leave that last edge without any cream on it because you can imagine as you roll it, it'll push the filling. Now I use the paper just to help me re-roll into a neat little log. Watching Zola roll her cake, I see how delicate she is with it. So seeing her do it so nicely and then coming out like such a perfect roll, it was beautiful to watch. Now it's time to decorate. Because this is citrus themed, we've got a few citrus blossoms and leaves just to garnish the board. I would never put an inedible decoration on top of your bake. That's something to remember. We're finishing this off with an orange glaze. So this is some icing sugar, a bit of orange juice and some orange zest. So more of that fruity flavor coming through. So here it is, guys, my citrus Swiss roll to inspire your fruity creations. Right, you have 30 minutes to plan. Make sure you use your books 
make sure that you know what your plan is. But before all of that, come, let's taste. Wow, 30 minutes to plan. Ooh, not a lot of top. That's cutting it fine. Yes, please, don't mind if I do. Oh! <laughs> Thank you very much. This looks delicious. Chef Zola's cake looks absolutely decadent. However, I could not indulge in it because I am a vegetarian, which makes baking interesting for me because I can't eat eggs. Oh, this cake was amazing. Absolutely mouth-watering. The flavors, the sweetness, the citrus, so good. She's definitely set the bar really high and I'm actually a little intimidated now. Like, I'm shook. <laughs> My first layer is going to be a dark chocolate sponge and a baked mousse together, and then set on top of that a traditional milk tart. At the very top, I'm gonna to incorporate a fruity glaze. I hope to get it done in time. I'm thinking for my cake to use a similar base that Zola used for her cake, and I'm gonna adjust it with a lot of citrus, mostly lemons, and hoisin blueberries in there. It's a classic pairing. And then, because I'm a cake artist, I'm gonna make some sugar flowers. I'm thinking along the lines of passion fruit and strawberry. However, adding a pineapple twist. So I want the pineapple twist to be, it is, but it's not. I really like the idea of a vanilla sponge, maybe with a bit of blueberries inside, just to bring that berries in there. But the entire look I want to go for is definitely rustic and farm style, because that in essence is what I think of when I think of fruit. What I'm going to do to make my cake stand out is make it beautiful to look at. Right, so you want to eat with your eyes first. Of course it's gonna taste good, regardless, it's me. I'm thinking citrus, I'm thinking meringues, I'm thinking a nice sponge. Oh yeah, let's bake some more memories. With only three hours to complete their fruit-inspired cake, who will bake their way into the top 10? Contestants, I'm sure you're all used to making delicious treats for friends and family. We want to see the same passion and excitement right here today. You have all the equipment that you need to complete this challenge at your station. You have Samsung appliances, you have La Cruzai cookware, and then guys, you have the brand new Thermomix TM6 at your disposal. You also have use of this wonderful pantry throughout the challenge. Right, your time starts in three, two, one, get biking. First steps, collect my flour, get my hero ingredient, passion fruit. I'm hoping no one else goes for the same fruit as me, so I'm gonna steal the whole bowl. <laughs> the first thing I'm gonna go for is grab my lemons and grab blueberries. We're all doing fruit cakes, so I have a feeling because it's a classic flavor, everyone's gonna go for them. I see Shazia is also grabbing some blueberries, and I'm like, girl, don't come for me. Shazia. Yes. How are you? I'm good in your shift. The picture, can you explain? This is my little sister. She's 10 years old. She is my little hero. Oh. She is a type 1 diabetic. She was diagnosed at the age of four. She honestly has just got me through so much and I'm using this photo like a tool to look at throughout the competition. Whenever I get nervous, this will just remind me that stay calm. I know she always looks to me as motivation. So today I'm looking towards her as motivation. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's goosebump stuff. I <laughs> love that. Yeah. Baking has always been a big part of my life, so is cooking. Fun fact, I'm actually releasing a cookbook really soon. My mom being Chinese and my dad being Indian, I decided to make a cookbook that infused that fusion foods into one cookbook and my most favorite dishes of cooking and baking will be in this cookbook. Winning Tastemaster essay will be everything to me. I think it's a form of showing people that it doesn't matter where you come from or whether you've studied or not, that if you really put your mind to something, you can definitely make it happen and I definitely think that I have what it takes. Samantha. Hello. Hey. Pineapple, sea lemon, lemon kiss. Yes. What, what's your plan? I get a drink om sea lemon in blueberry cook to make. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I get ook a drink om lime and coconut cook to make. Mm. So I grab it not alles. <laughs> <laughs> but I spoke to my son this morning and I was like, if I could make one cake for you right now, what mm. would it be? Mm. And he said, lemon and blueberry. So, oh. lemon and blueberry it is. Klink for me so sterk genoeg yes. motiveren. Ja, dis sy ginsteling en hy sal dit alles nie so in sy gezicht indruk. So. Mooi. When my son turned one was when I made the leap into baking and sugar craft and playing around with things like that. So by his second birthday, I made his birthday cake for him. And it's just been full steam ahead from there on out. 
I fell in love with sugar flowers around 2015 and I am literally obsessed. And I've then turned my cake business into specializing in wedding cakes with beautifully handcrafted sugar flowers. Growing up, baking wasn't really a thing that I did in the house. So now that I have children of my own, I really want to make those baking memories with my kids. Now my daughter is two and a half, and the minute I reach for my apron and we pull out the flower, she is there and she just enjoys it. So I am enjoying every single day baking with my dad. First things first, I've only got three hours, so I need to get my cheesecake mixture done, my cake batter done, and get everything into the oven. I need to get my cheesecake set on top of my sponge and keep moving. My love for pastry and all things sweet, I believe, came from my granddad. He was a really good pastry chef. And my mom, we're all foodies. We all love to cook, we all love to bake. It's always just been in my blood. These days, with so many new skills being developed, so many new trends, I believe old school is best school. Old school classic recipes, old school classic desserts, French style, German baking, Austrian baking, old school, you cannot go wrong. That's my style. Hello. I see a lot of chaos here, but you yeah. look very calm. I am very calm. So I feel confident, but I do see a lot of things. Okay, so what I'm doing is traditional milk tart cheesecake. And underneath that, I'm going to set like a, quite a, like an Amasi sponge slash baked mousse. And you have enough time to, to finish all those elements? I think so. I just need to get everything into the fridge as soon as possible just to set. Is that your way of telling us to go away? In a, in a roundabout okay. way, okay. yeah. We can take a hint, Carl. Okay, we can cool. take a hint. Good luck, Cheers, Carl. thank you. I'm baking a Devonshire sponge cake. Basically, you separate your eggs, you whip your egg whites, and incorporate it into your batter. Luazi's love for baking is a passion he shares daily with the customers at a popular coffee shop in Mabuneng. I was actually walking past the coffee shop and I saw it was just coffee. And I came inside here, I asked for the manager and I asked him if he needed someone to bake, actually, because I actually wanted to supply him with some cake. And he told me he's looking for a chef. But because I'm an all-rounder chef, that's when I was like, oh, why not grab the opportunity? And that has just allowed me to also grow as well, as a person and as a chef as well. Luazi? Hi, Zola. I saw you measuring in a very interesting way. You used a palette knife? Yes. Explain, please. Um, so the pellet knife was given to me by my mentor, uh -huh. Chef TP, and that's when I started baking. Oh, wow. So I use my spatula every day for measuring, for decorating cakes. Really helpful. My special baby. I started baking when I was in grade nine. There was a technology project, and they were like, you need to bake a cake that symbolizes you and then explain it to your classmates. So I decided to make a red velvet cake, but it was not that great, I must say. <laughs> I took some chocolate and I just wrote my name on the thing and I was like, okay. It was not a pretty cake, I was very insecure, but everyone loved the cake. It looked ugly, but when everyone ate it, they're like, this is so good, and I was like, that's the feeling I want to continue to recreate. So that's how my love started, through that um, ugly cake. <laughs> Hello, Tandok. Hi. What is happening? I'm doing a vanilla and passion fruit cake. Oh. Yes. Very nice. <laughs> so what inspired the combination? Um, so my grandmother actually used to grow so many like plants in the house. So we had like granadilla, we had figs, we had all these things. So I was like, let me use the granadilla because I'm not really a fruit eater, but if I must eat a fruit, I'll have some passion. You're not a fruit eater, but your goko used to grow fruit. Yeah, I wasn't alive when she... <laughs> Thank the Lord, because oh. she would have smacked me. <laughs> I wasn't alive, so I hate fruit. It's just, it's nasty. But we, wow. can, we can do it. We can live with it. It's okay. For my cake, I intend on making a pineapple. For that, I'm going to need two sponges cut in half, and then cut in half again, so I get a high stack, which will resemble a half pineapple. Hello. Hi, judges. Oh, it smells deliciously fruity here. Tell us what you're making. So I'm making a passion fruit and strawberry cake. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm using passion fruit is because when I used to go to my grand's house, she had a big passion fruit plantation. And this reminds me pretty much of home because she would make passion fruit pancakes and she would make a vanilla sponge and she'd add in passion fruit to it. Delicious. And fresh passion fruit juice. So I'm just trying to incorporate that and keep her in memory with this. I grew up 
in the Lush Farm of New Glasgow. I had a really carefree childhood and I think that's where I appreciated nature. Also, my family is really steeped into the rich culture of Hinduism, which sort of shaped me into who I am today. I grew up watching my granny prepare meals for us and that's where my love started because I would want to be involved in helping her and I guess it's history from there. Contestants, you have two hours left. Looks can be deceiving, I might be looking calm, but what's going on in here is a totally different story. Something terrible has happened. My first batch of batter literally just split, so I really need to go back to the beginning and start again. Samantha, hi. have we still not got cakes in the oven? No, I do. I uh, see cake tins still. Yes, I've got one in the oven, and uh -huh. then I'm working on batter for two more layers. OK, so now we're going to have eight layers. No, I've got two little in here, and then I made too much. So okay. I'm going to wing it and see what happens. OK, I would ignore the extra ones and just focus on the ones that are in the oven that you planned to All right, make. we'll see how it goes. I'm sure it'll be fine. Thank you. With time running out, will Samantha pull herself together and complete her bake on time? Stay tuned to find out. Who will influence the nation with their creative bakes? Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. My plan to fix this is scrap the whole thing, start from scratch. Actually look at my notes, look at what I'm doing, focus, there's no space here for self-doubt, and do the thing you know how to do. Cake is in the oven, now I'm starting with my custard. Custard, you don't want them to split, so I've got to keep an eye close on them. Oh man, my custard just split. Rosie didn't temper his eggs with his milk, so mm. he, what he did was put everything into the pot and then whisk it, and then obviously the eggs overcook, and that's what helps it to split. Mm. So what you're supposed to do is heat your milk or your cream, mm -hmm. then you know whisk your eggs and your sugar, and then add the hot liquid to temper it mm -hmm. to make sure mm -hmm. that you know it gradually heats up. Got then it. pop it back and then stir it and heat it up. Second attempt of my custard, I'm leaving the butter out adding a bit of citrus just to give it a nice orange flavor. Let's do it. Ooh. First cake out the oven, I think. Um, did they bake the way that you intended? Not really, but I think it'll be fine. What? what why are you saying no, not really? Um, so it kind of went up and then down. Looks good on the sides. The, the caramelization of the sugar looks really nice. So yeah, I'm they look spongy. And that? What's that? Caramel. caramel. Yeah, I'm going to make a passion fruit caramel. Oh, a passion fruit caramel? That's interesting. Yes. Talk me through that situation. Um, so basically, you make a caramel with the butter, with the cream, and then the last um, element you add is the passion fruit juice, and you just have that go through. And then I'm going to top the cake with that, with my German buttercream. OK. Shazia, you seem to have everything under control. Yeah, I think so. Looking Thank you. Good. Well. Tell me, in your personal life, you're quite the extreme sportswoman, it sounds like. It. Yes, Tell so me more. soccer was always a big part of my life. I've been playing soccer since I was four years old. It's pretty much all I knew. Made professional in 2017, and then I got diagnosed with a brain tumor, so I had no choice but to start playing professional league soccer. If I'm not spending my time in the kitchen, then I'm definitely on the racetrack because I'm a full car enthusiast. And I also work full time and I'm studying full time, so juggling all of this is really a lot. And I'm also a full time bridal makeup artist and hairstylist. Wow, that's very just, impressive. Do you have the same 24 hours as everyone else? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> soccer, you're baking, you're race car driving. I mean, where do you find the extra time I to bake? I like life gets really boring when you just sit and do nothing. Mm -hmm. I need to do something, you know, adventurous with adrenaline. Okay. I suddenly feel like I'm underachieving. <laughs> For the outer skin of the pineapple, I'm going to use white chocolate, but I don't know how to temper chocolate, so I'm going to melt it, mold it, and put it in the fridge and hope for the best. I see yellow colouring and I'm intrigued. So I'm trying to achieve a pineapple colour, however, I am partially colourblind. Unfortunately, some of these colours, green and yellow, form part of a pineapple, which makes this challenge more difficult for me. You're choosing a very specific colour, but you can't actually see the colour, so how do you judge? If I'm at home, I'd get the assistance of somebody else. OK, well, here I am, assistant. Yeah, do you so need more? What does it look like? OK, so right now, it's more of a pastel yellow. OK, so I'll do a drop. OK, let's try that. Yeah, that's like mustardy, but... 
looks good. Should I just leave now? I've made two cakes, two layers, and now I'm thinking about it, I want to add a third layer just to get that visual representation of how I wanted my cake to look. High cake with the caramel dripping, so I'm making a third layer. I just felt like a third layer. Oh, we like, have, okay. Yeah. I have a vision okay. and I feel like I need a third layer. And you're okay with the time? I'll be fine. Okay, I'll, I'll be, be fine. fine. I'll be fine. Not very convincing, <laughs> but okay, you go, girl. Round two of cake, they're coming out of the oven. I peel back the paper and it's perfection, just the way I wanted it. Now I need to get them in the fridge and I am praying to the gods they cool in time. Guys, one hour left on the clock, one hour left. Hopefully by this time your cakes are cooling. Kyle, that looks great. So this is the baked milk tart cheesecake just out the oven and uh, into the freezer now. Kyle, any risk right now? That it won't set. Yeah. In time? In time, so I've got one hour. Okay, so let's Good. do it. Okay, thanks. Get it there. Cool. <laughs> There's about an hour left. My third layer is still in the oven. I'm really worried, because I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough time to get the cake out, cool it, and then have the German buttercream go on, because you don't want to add buttercream while the cake is still hot. I'm making some sugar flowers for this cake, and usually when I do this for wedding cakes, it can take up to a couple of hours per flower, even days for a project. I don't have that kind of time. I don't have all my tools, so I'm going to freehand it um, and do something really simple. So yeah, I'm making a meringue. It should be taking about 10 minutes. Moment of yeah. truth. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> nice and glossy, loving the texture of my meringue. You're done with this, hey? Oh yeah, sure. Thanks. This you is can nice. have it, it's yours. Okay. Thank you. Contestants, time is flying in the Taste Master Kitchen. It's the final 30-minute mark. I see a lot of nervous faces, but I want to see your creativity come to life, guys. Things are really messy in my station. My cake is collapsing because of the lemon curd layered in between the cake. But I intend on brushing melted white chocolate, which is going to harden once it sets in the fridge, which will prevent my cake from going soft and falling over. The small little aspects for decorating and stuff is not done. I honestly did not think it was going to take this long, so I started off very chill, but now I'm panicking. Loazi? Yes, Sala. What's happening? So I'm making my garnishes. OK, so what are you doing? Candying the fruit? Yes. We uh, on, Yona. So I'm going to brush it on the cake. OK. <laughs> Carry on. Thank you. <laughs> My cake's been in the fridge for an hour, setting and cooling, and I really hope it sets. And this is the moment of truth. And it worked. I really want my cake to be decorative, lots of color, lots of pop. So what I'm doing is poaching some raspberries for the red, vibrant color. I'm doing some vanilla Chantilly cream, some fresh flowers, some gold edible balls, and I really hope it looks good. That mousse is driving me crazy. It's not setting, it's been in the freezer. I think I should have started with the mousse, honestly. At this point, I'm thinking maybe we could just use it as a cream, but we could still make this work. So there's 20 minutes left. I've just laid my first two layers. I'm waiting for my third layer to put on, waiting for it to cool before I put it on. So it's a waiting game now. Cakes out of the fridge, first thing is get my base filling down and then layer up all those delicious flavors with my blueberry sauce and my lemon curd. Smack on the top layer of cake and then hoi on those decorations and make it look pretty. 10 minutes to go, everybody. It's crunch time. 10 more minutes. I'm running around like a headless chicken at this point. Everything is all over the place. Some of my stuff is still in the freezer, some is in the fridge. I just need to get something on the plate. 10 minutes and I'm sticking the chocolate onto my pineapple. However, my chocolate is melting really fast, which means I gotta move really quick. Last few minutes and I've got the layers, they're all cooled and I'm adding the final touches to my cake. So I've got the German buttercream going, I've got the caramel going, I've got some beautiful flowers and garnishes, I've got some passion fruit as well, so we're just making it look pretty at this point. Five minutes left, guys, five minutes. Finishing touches, please. Right, how are we doing? Are we going to be done in time? I think so. Fabulous. Five, four, Three, two, one. one. Time's up, 
step away from your bakes. That is it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I actually managed to finish this. It isn't exactly how I expected it to look, but I guess that's rustic. Looking at my cake, this is not how I envisioned it, but I hope the flavors that I put in make up for the way it looks. Will Sahel's bake deliver on flavor to save him from the first elimination? Find out after the break. With a grand prize worth 90,000 Rand, including Samsung home and kitchen appliances, a Thermomix TM6 to the value of 26,000 Rand, plus Le Creuset cookware and accessories to the value of 15,000 Rand, the stakes are high. Whose creation will tickle the judges' taste buds? Bake more memories with the Taste Master and Royal Baking Powder. It's judging time, and I'm up first. I hope my flavors are balanced given that I don't really like fruit, but it looks beautiful, so I'm happy to present it. Tando, is this what you envisioned? You made a few changes at the end there. Are you happy with them? Yeah, I am. I am so nervous while Fritz is cutting my cake. I hope the layers are balanced. I hope there's enough German buttercream versus enough cake. And so as soon as he pulls it out, I'm like, perfect. I can definitely taste the fruitiness. In fact, you can smell the fruitiness, which is really, really lovely. The sponge is light, it's fluffy, it's really, really flavorful. The only thing for me, I wish I had more of that passion fruit caramel. That is absolutely delicious, and I wish you'd put it in every single layer. It would have added so much more flavor, so much more fruitiness to the rest of the cake. Don't wanna lie, but I'm pretty nervous. I stuck to the brief. My cake is fruity, it's looking all colorful. I'm excited for the judges to taste. Chef. There you go. My cake looks dense. Oh. This is bad. Luazi, custard came out just fine. <laughs> that showed great character to come back from a setback like that. So well done on this cake. It's, it's very tasty. I really enjoy the citrus flavor in the custard. I think that was delicious. For me, I think that the sponge feels really light. It looks really light, but once you get into the sponge itself, it is quite dense. It absolutely looks beautiful, but I think you just missed the mark a little bit with your sponge. Walking up to the judges with my cake, I'm really feeling nervous. My heart is pounding in my chest, but I'm confident that they're gonna like it. So the first layer at the bottom, that's a dark chocolate baked mousse cake. And then on top of that, I set a milk tart cheesecake. And you happy? I am, I just wish it would have set longer. Could have done with just five minutes in the fridge. I mean, it would have set perfectly. Kyle, you were worried about the set, but actually that cheesecake, the middle, it's so luscious, it's so creamy. For me, this was a fruity challenge, but the dominant flavor here is definitely dark chocolate. It overpowers everything, both in texture and in flavor. So I wish that the, the fruit stood out much more. It's my turn to go up next, and I'm so nervous. All I'm thinking is, hold onto your cake. Don't trip, don't fall. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <sighs> um, so it is a lemon and blueberry cake, and I'm going to call it Kieran's Delight after my son, because it's his favorite cake to eat. Oh, Nice one. It is very elegant. It looks absolutely beautiful, but you did rush near the end. Did you get every single component you meant to on that cake? You happy? Um, I hit a bit of a speed bump. It's not what I planned, but I am resilient think on my feet so I pivoted and I took it from there and I'm, I'm okay with how this turned out. Fritz goes to cutting to my cake and all I'm thinking is please let all the elements be in that one slice and he lifts it up and I can see the beautiful layers of lemon and blueberry and I'm just like I did this yes. Samantha the combination of blueberry and lemon is a classic and you've nailed it. And you could just tell when Fritz cut that cake, the texture of that sponge was evident then, and eating it is such a delight. Absolutely delicious. Walking towards the judges, looking at their faces, 
Fritz has this concentrated face that he always has. Zola's smiling, and I'm like, please smile when you actually eat my cake. So I've made a rusty cato cake. My sponge is orange, blueberry, and vanilla. My filling is a white chocolate cream with hazelnut praline, and I've done a seasonal berry compote on top. That few seconds of waiting for feedback is the most intimidating few seconds of your life. It's just that anticipation is just balding. The sponge actually has a great texture. I like it a lot. I like the praline. It's got a good flavor and I think it's good for the combination. I think that the mousse, you didn't quite get the, the set you were looking for. And the mousse kind of gets lost in all that berry and in all that sponge. I just think there isn't enough balance. I'm kind of upset with myself because putting that berry compote on top was like a last minute way to just get everything together. And I think drenching it in that kind of took away from the balance and that kind of sucks. I'm right at the back, which means I have quite a distance to walk, which means my cake could collapse. I literally have my heart on the cake stand. Wow, how pineapple and spectacular. Thank you, Chef. So today I made a passion fruit sponge layered with a strawberry and passion fruit curd. The inspiration is it is but it's not. It looks like a pineapple, but the taste is totally different. I hope you enjoy. Obviously, presentation is a big part of who you are and what you yes. do. And um, much appreciation for the work Thank that you. you've put into this. Ultimately, I think the taste is the determining factor. Yes. Watching Judge Fritz cut through my cake, my fear is that he doesn't cut through a straw. So fingers crossed. So Hale, I'm really enjoying this cake. A lot. The passion fruit, the whole experience, it is just that. It's an experience. And I think the passion fruit is absolutely delicious. The curd is well played. For me, the only thing is slightly sweet on the buttercream side and also a little bit grainy on the buttercream side. I think you need to cream it a little bit more and perhaps a little less sugar. But like you said, the cake is an experience. I think the feedback was quite positive. So I think I stand a chance in the top three. Judges are deliberating and making their decision. I am feeling so nervous. Hearing all the feedback, looking at what's around me, looking at all the cakes, it could go either way. It's a 50-50 here. Contestants, you can give yourselves a round of applause. First challenge done. Woo! Yay! <laughs> Well done, guys. We're really, really proud of you. Zola and my expectations were really high, and I felt like everybody was pushing that limit, really putting their best efforts into this uh, challenge. So thank you for that. At this moment, I'm nervous. As you know, there has to be a bottom three, and there has to be a top three. Will the following people please step forward? Waiting for the judges to actually announce their decision that's next level pressure. Shazia. Loazi. Zola calls my name up. This is intense. And Kyle. I hear my name. This is crazy. Let's just see how it goes. It could go anyway. Oh no. I might actually be in the bottom. The three of you are in the bottom three. That means the three of you behind them are moving on to the top ten. Well done. Yay, I'm not in the bottom. Whoa, I am proud of myself. I am so excited. I've made it into the top ten. The pressure's off for me and I'm feeling good. The three of you, I just want to let you know that there were such minor details that put you in the bottom. So you are absolutely not counting yourselves out. You can absolutely come back and make it to the next round. Just apply yourselves and focus. I'm bummed right now, but I'll definitely bounce back. I really didn't want to end up here, but I'm confident I can make it in the elimination round. I'm feeling really down. I don't think this is a great way to start off a competition. I really didn't think I'd go to elimination in my first round. It is now time to discuss the matter of the pin. Someone is about to win this pin and the competition's been tough. This can go any which way. I am currently nervous. However, I do think I stand a chance. There has been a master of this challenge, which we felt ticked all the boxes. 
which we found important. I felt that the theme was well executed without dominating the excellence of the actual cake. It was a great sponge. The flavors were Moorish. Just felt like we had to have one more bite of this dish. This pin goes to Kieran's Delight. Woo! Well done. Congratulations, Samantha. You can put this and wear it with pride. Thank you. You did well. Thank you. I got it. It's mine. I won. I'm ecstatic. Once again, guys, a huge congratulations to all of you. Not only the top three, but you guys behind. You're going to come back fighting. We can't wait to see your next bakes. I'm nervous again because I have no idea what's about to come. But I have a pin and I'm sure it's going to help me in some way. So I'm very keen to exercise that power. Well done to Sam. She really deserves the pin. Her sponge was really perfect. And she is one to watch in the future. Coming up next Friday evening on the Tastemaster SA Baking Edition. The next six finalists compete to impress Fritz and Zola, along with special guest judge, the stylish baker, Faiza Omar. Who will make it through to the top 10? And who will be heading into the first elimination challenge? Another feel-good production.